Hello, and welcome to the Ontario Veterinary College Technology Proposal, a project for MSI 421 Strategic Management of Technology, composed by Victor Giger, Ryan Fahi, Abdurrahim, Medj Tabara, Matthew Watson, and Philip Ziba. All prepared for uh, under Dr. Carr. So, to start today off, we'll briefly go through the table of contents. First, we'll run you through a brief introduction of our project. Then, we'll discuss the research process conducted. After this, the data analysis will be observed. Then, we will propose the technologies considered. Finally, we will propose our recommendations and bring up our conclusions from our results. Introduction. Background. So, what was our goal? Our goal was to work with the OVC in order to find the best way for pet owners and vets to connect. And uh, why did the OVC want us to do this? The OVC being the Ontario's Veterinary College, of course. Well, generally the goal was, or the hope is to change the pet care culture from one of a pet repair shop, shall we say, where pet, o uh, pet owners only take their pets to the vet when they notice acute problems, such as my dog has been had a fever for the past two days, or my dog has broken his leg, to a more proactive healthcare style, where rather um, information regarding how the best way to take your care of your pet in the day-to-day -day is given to owners in order to mitigate and avoid these acute problems in the first place. So rather than coming with... Uh, a dog who has been unable to eat for the uh, past three days, that situation never even arises because the dog has always been properly fed, properly exercised. And this just creates happier pets, which makes happier owners, which of course makes happier vets. So how did we decide to go about this? We first uh, we, we realized that research was needed. We decided that we would have to conduct surveys with multiple stakeholders uh, in order to determine how people were currently dealing with their pet care, uh, pet health, and where they were finding their pet uh, lifestyle advice from. Then we had to analyze the multiple, well, multiple technologies that based off of our research could help satisfy these pet owner needs and, and really improve communication in between pet owners and vets themselves. And then finally, of course, recommend a best course of action depending on the, well, uh, based off of the technologies that we've reviewed and, uh, and have found and how should they be implemented? Uh, which ones are really viable? And what would the risks be? In, uh, so now we come to the research process. So what was the data gathering process that we went through? First, of course, we met with the OVC uh, in order to really get a bearing on what they wanted and what the problem itself was. So this first meeting, there was a lot of discussion, a lot of back and forth, and we really came away with the impression that the OVC was looking for some way to improve pet care, or pet care, really. The, the end goal is pet care and pet wellness. And they think that the best way to go about that right now, we want to improve pet owner and vet communication. Because right now, a lot of communication or a lot of pet advice is coming from other sources that aren't controlled. And we have a lot of cases where it's not necessarily good advice. It's not the right advice. Uh, so we're trying to guide, really, pet owners towards vets as their first uh, and primary source for pet care knowledge. So uh, following this, we just had to isolate groups and, and decide what groups 
who we wanted to survey, really, uh, where we wanted to collect our data. And we came to the conclusion that the best places for the best uh, sources were, of course, pet owners themselves, veterinarians. And to get an idea of alternate sources of pet care information, we decided to go to pet stores as well, because we feel that a lot of the smaller questions end up slipping through vets' fingers and end up at a pet store, for example. So... What did we do? We compiled a list of local pet stores and vets uh, that we could reach out to and start collecting information from. We created survey questionnaires, uh, one for each group. Depending on the group, it was seven to eight questions. Uh, and these questions were derived mostly from what the OBC felt was, uh, was needed. We came back to the OBC at this point and ran them through the questions that we uh, we came up with before we started our survey process in order to make sure they were on board. And they did have a couple suggestions, which we incorporated and uh, edited. Then we conducted surveys on the data sources, meaning we went out with our surveys, uh, with our questionnaires, and started filling up data. So we reached out to pets uh, pet owners, be it family, friends, acquaintances, uh, in order to find data from that source. We reached out to vets via email and phone. And we just, uh, we got out, went to, uh, drove around Waterloo and passed by nearby pet stores and, uh, found some free, some free workers and started picking their brains to see what they thought of the whole situation. Then finally we got together and we started discussing our results in order to brainstorm possible solutions. So, what did we ask? Uh, for pet owners, we, we reached out to them both in person and via Google Forms online. Uh, and this was mainly done through social media, uh, Facebook primarily, of course. And what did we ask? Well, first we asked, what kind of pets do you have? How much contact do you have or want with your vet? And how often do you go to set vet? How much money would you be willing to invest in a new tech for your pet's wellness? What questions do you have for a vet? What quick knowledge would you like to have? What makes you decide when to take your pet to a vet? Where do you find your pet care knowledge? From the internet? Friends? Vets? pet stores, etc. Would you be willing to use some sort of pet tracking, something to keep an eye on things like its fitness, weight, uh, how much it's been eating? Think of a fet, pet version of Fitbit. And have you or your pet had any major incidents, any major healthcare crises? Well, crises. What caused it? And particularly, if you have had these issues, would constant contact or earlier contact with your vet have made a difference? Or was it simply an acute problem that your pet ate something very bad or, or got hit by a car, etc.? Next up, we went out to the pet stores. And how was this done? This was done purely in person. We simply drove out to the pet stores and found some free attendance. What did we ask? First off, what do people ask before buying a pet? What do people ask you that is outside your scope or knowledge? Do you know of any interesting new technologies that could uh, help with pet care or pet and veterinarian communication? Do people really want to know lifestyle changes and lifestyle recommendations from you, such as how should they be feeding their dog or how much exercise it needs? Are people wondering about depressed animals? Do they want to know what the signs would be? And if so, are they asking how could they cheer their pet up? What do you think the typical pet owner can work on? What are the typical downfalls of a pet owner. And finally, do you believe that there 
Finally, we went to the vet clinics themselves. How did we do this? We did this over email, over phone, and in person. And what did we ask? What technology do you use related to pet care? What are some common avoidable pet owner mistakes that you've encountered? How much technology would you be willing to bring in? And this may be easier to answer either with a dollar value as a pet per, well, per pet cost or as a net cost. Would you find a forum or platform for general questions, knowledge, tips for new pet owners useful? What information would you like to share with these new pet owners? What information do you think they really need to know? If you were to track information for individual pets, what sort of data could be useful to you? Would you be able to spot symptoms or problems sooner uh, with this advanced information? Or do pet owners already come to you in a pretty timely fashion? and convey the right information. Fine. Uh, also, do you think there's room for technology to improve healthcare? And if so, how? And finally, are people asking you questions about pet care and pet lifestyle? And if so, what are they really asking? Like what questions do they generally want answered? Following this, we had the technology identification phase. So it, it was really important to gather an understanding of what the OVC thought was going on, because of course the OVC as a stakeholder and as a collection of vets has a pretty good viewpoint and a pretty good idea of where the market is going and uh, what to, new technologies are out there. We also decided to do some research of our own and uh, we collected some new and interesting ideas that we found on the internet. What, uh, what new solutions are out there on the market? What are people pitching nowadays? Um, and we, we, we spent quite a bit of time going through and, and finding suitable technologies in this realm. So preceding this, we had to identify what technologies aligned with the survey results, of course. So based off of the survey results, what exactly, what exactly were the problems and were the technologies we looking at able to solve these problems or mitigate them at least in order to reduce barriers between pet owner and veterinary communication. Then of course, we did a pros and cons for each technology. Uh, we, so we discussed things regarding or such as cost, uh, ease of access, feasibility, and also who would be responsible. Would it be vets who would have to really implement this technology or would it be more of a pet owner drive? And then, of course, we provided a recommendation based off of the technologies we found and how it should be adopted, who should really make the push etc. Next section, data analysis, and what were our key takeaways? So, what did we find out from pet owners? We really found out that, on average, you could expect your pet owner to spend about $100 on a new technology with very positive effects for their pet health. Now, of course, pet owners are a hugely varied group and we found that this value ranged immensely from something like $20 to $800, depending on who you were talking to and what pet they had. So um, we also found that pet owners were finding most of their information regarding pet care from either the internet, such as forums uh, and blogs, or from other family, friends who have pets um, in order to, to see what they think or, or, or how they believe is the best way to take care of their pet. And from this, we started already imagining that perhaps a sort of infopedia that was written with or by professionals, by experts in the field, 
in order to spread this uh, some possible misinformation in order to avoid the spread of misinformation could definitely be of value because of course when we're talking um, simply browsing the internet or going talking to to acquaintances there's certainly plenty of urban myths certain of uh, a lot of word of mouth that gets around that may always not be really the best advice for your pet care. Now, we found that pet owners were also generally pretty open to new technologies, um, but really the key factors that determines whether they would be willing to take on a new tech would be, first, it can't be too complicated. Second, it has to fall within their budget range, which, as discussed, was about $100 on average. And finally, people were not very open to wearables. People didn't like the idea of putting uh, a wearable technology on their pet. And, I mean, that does make sense. We, we, we felt that a lot of people were worried because, of course, it is an investment, and do you really want to put a $100 piece of equipment onto your dog's foot where maybe, hey, it runs away from home for a bit, it could fall off during playtime, the dog might bite it off. I mean, the possibilities are really endless. So people weren't really willing to take that risk. Then, furthermore... Uh, we found that a lot of pet owners are concerned regarding obesity um, and malnutrition overall. People really don't know what the best way to feed their pet is. There's a lot of ambiguity regarding how much their pet needs to eat, um, how many meals a day, what quantity, these sort of things. And uh, we thought that it would probably be good to, this is another area where a sort of trusted infopedia could really come in handy, or just more general pet owner vet communication, more clinic, uh, in clinic education, in order to, to make sure that pet owners really know what they're getting into and how to best take care of their pets. So we also found that generally, the pet has most contact with the vet when it's under one year old and has a lot of need for vaccinations, uh, these sort of things. And general questions when it's a young pet, they want to know better how to, how to take care of it. Um, but then once we pass the one year phase, pet owners generally tend to settle in. They feel like they know their pet better and know what they're doing. Uh, so generally they only come in once a year once they have that yearly checkup or vaccination. And besides that, they really don't pass by the doctor unless you notice some acute problem, some odd behavior uh, that they warrant requires the vet. But we found also that a lot of pet owners would like an easier way to get into contact with their vet. Um, because it's, it's generally pet, pets or vets only have hours that coincide with working hours. So it's really difficult for a pet owner to justify taking a day off of work in order to pass by the vet unless they really notice an acute problem with their pet, one that that really concerns them. But if, if there's no necessarily sign of illness or, or acute issue, it's really hard to justify, oh, well, I'm just going to go in for a checkup just to make sure everything's fine. Now, what did we find from the pet stores? We found from the pet stores that really there was less information. Um, we found that pet owners were less, or pet stores were less receptive than pet owners. Pet owners love to talk about their pets, but uh, with the pet stores, once they saw that they that we weren't exactly interested in buying a particular thing, um, they didn't give us quite as much time of the day which of course is understandable considering that we are at their place of work and uh, we were not customers, but we were requesting time of them. Though they were really uh, interested in informing us on pet solutions that they have in store. They would like to, sh uh, they were always showing us solutions that they thought might be handy um, on the shelf or off the shelf. 
but they weren't really they they weren't aware of market developments, shall we say, or things that were on the horizon. Um, so they weren't a fan of also individual pet tracking, but they did like the idea of keeping a general idea on, on pet trends and having, um, rather than individual knowledge, just more aggregate knowledge, more big data on the pet health and pet care scene. Um, generally, they didn't have too much contact with the vet, but when they did, they really had, um, they really just diverted everything to the vet itself. They left in terms of pet care knowledge and in terms of courses of action, if somebody did come into a pet store when their pet had a problem, like let's say something they didn't think was necessarily needed for a pet or for a vet, like maybe a rash, uh, if they did happen to, to go to the vet, they really allowed the vet to, to lead the show and, and, um, and really let their expertise shine through. And generally, um, they're satisfied with how they contact the vet. They generally just contact the vet via phone, email, particularly phone if it's an acute case, if somebody comes in at the time and they already have some communication on a regular basis with the vet so they know each other they have their vet that they go to um and they were really satisfied they didn't feel that they needed some way to improve their communication with the vet itself following this we have the veterinarians what did we really find from the veterinarians uh unfortunately it was a small volume of data we weren't really able to reach out to too many Vets, um, a lot of vet clinics didn't really have the time to talk to us. They said they were busy. They couldn't make the time, I guess. Um, and that is despite that we had agreements with them. We reached out an email. We had the OVC reach out even and let them know that we would be contacting them. But we still weren't received with the, um, the utmost of enthusiasm, shall we say. Well, currently, though, a lot of uh, vet clinics are using AVI Mark. So this is a, a method for communication, and it's really a big improvement over what they were previously using, which was just mail and, and the telephone. But it's very one directional. So it's really it's only going from the vet to the pet owner, and there is really no opportunity for the vet, uh, the pet owner to get back to the vet and to to let them know how things are going without actually appearing at the vet itself. Um, they did uh, um, have a positive impression of the Infopedia solution. They they thought it was a an interesting idea, and uh, we did find that we got some good feedback from them regarding what would be possible and what wouldn't. Um, we found that they would be willing to do some virtual follow-ups, be it, you know, uh, looking at their pet or the pet owner showing the stitches of their pet via their phone camera, um, rather than taking it into the vet itself. But only certain procedures would be viable this way. Uh, and a good chunk of follow-ups would still have to be conducted at the vet itself or at the clinic itself. And finally, uh, they said that pet wearables simply would not work because right now there really is no standard data format um, or data collection in the pet realm, in the clinic realm. So really the data would be all over the place uh, and it, the primary advantage, which would be portability between one clinic to the other um, and, and uh, in a sense of universal information, wouldn't even be there. Then our other, um, we did have a couple other sources of information. Because we didn't get as much data from pet stores and vets as we were hoping, um, we wanted to get points of view from other industries, uh, industry professionals, 
and, and other stakeholders what they thought. So uh, we got up, to, uh, we, we talked to some veterinary receptionists, for example, and I mean, usually they are the first point of contact in a clinic. Um, so they tend to get really bogged down by these day-to-day -day activities. And, um, and a lot of that ends up coming in the form of these, these simple questions that an infopedia really could handle quite well and could end up saving them a lot of time uh, and hence the clinic a lot of time by, by improving their workload. Also, we spoke with veter veterinary consultants um, and they weren't really big fans of selling recurring themes in a clinic. Um, so they were preferring to uh, pass the costs on to pet owners, but generally they found that um, it's going to be a, a, it's going to be tricky overall to implement. That um, you really need to sell the idea quite well to the pet owners in order to to get them to to buy in and to be willing to to either pay say be a monthly fee for some improved health care or a larger upfront cost and finally um, we spoke with some video conferencing site um, experts so this is just outside of the realm of uh, of vet and pet care but it was to, to, to analyze how easy that would be to, um, to implement. And generally, uh, it was found that it's not too hard to, to set up these, these video conferences and that we could improve client experience uh, via the use of this technology in order to get pet owners, um, they would be able to provide information regarding their pet on their own time without necessarily having to to take time off of work and go into the vet and all these things. So what technologies were considered? The first technology that we considered was a web infopedia. So what does that mean? That's the, inf the development of a database with information regarding common pet illnesses and exercise lifestyles um, for their ideal health. So think of similar to a Wikipedia, but um, it would contain information regarding different breeds of how much exercise and how they should be eating um, in order to really just help answer these more general and um, a general knowledge information that a lot of pet owners need to know, especially when we're dealing with certain breeds, but either don't happen to go to the vet to ask or end up taking vet time to ask, which prohibits the vet from tending to more important matters, uh, such as actually tending to animals. Uh, we would like to implement a live text chat feature, um, similar to say, a service counter that you might encounter uh, that you might find on a mobile website um, or a, a carrier website in order to connect uh, users uh, being pen owners directly to vet techs or students who can speak with them in real time and answer them to uh, or answer general questions that might not be answered on the page they were looking for or direct them to a proper page that contains all the information they want. We, we identified that it's really important that this be a mobile friendly site uh, because increasingly people are using their mobiles to access the internet and want this pet information on the go. So let's say because they might just be at the pet store thinking, okay, what type of food would be best for this this breed, what what should I avoid? What toys are good for it, etc. Um, and and then that's the time where they're really going to find the use in this web infopedia. So it's important that they're able to have access to that on the go. And uh, because we're using an or open source model, like such as Wikipedia, um, it should be quick to to set up and to implement. 
but um, we need to have some sort of verification process for who is allowed to make these postings. Uh, and we thought that either by uploading some proof of some proof of expertise before they're allowed to make edits would be the ideal method. It's important to balance practicality uh, along with a certain sense of security uh, in this measure. And this way we end up with a, a reliable source of information that can be trusted, but that uh, because it's open source and, and, and many people are contributing, it, it doesn't require too much time of any contributor. Following this, we, we considered plet wearables. Uh, we found that it is a growing market. Day by day, more and more solutions are appearing. Uh, and it makes it easy to, to track certain pet behaviors, such as how much the pet is walking, or whether the pet has been laying down a lot, eating well, what's its weight, etc. And it's, uh, not only does it remove a certain human air element, uh, in that maybe the pet owner has been very busy and hasn't attended properly to its pet and hasn't been able to see a change in trends, um, because, of course, the wearable is always there. Um, and it also provides a big opportunity for pets to get involved with the day-to-day -day, uh, activities of a pet and shape how pet care evolves in the future and how they want their profession to evolve, uh, be it from a more acute, as we said, acute uh, healthcare to a more lifestyle-focused approach. Um, and finally, uh, vet involvement removes the tag of vet contact replacements from the wearables. Now, the next uh, solution we considered was a vet, what's called vet to pet and that's really just a tool that simply assists in the communication between vets and pet owners. It's cloud-based and it connects uh, vet clinics in particular with their users or with their pet owners. Um, it can be used to purchase medicine and specialty foods that the vet itself uh, sells along with things like setting up appointments and uploading uh, test results. And there's a family fair share feature so that multiple family members will be of advised of upcoming appointments or vaccinations uh, in order to assure that somebody is aware and uh, somebody is, is free to take their pet to the clinic. Um, also, we have uh, Pet Sync. It's uh, integrated with the commonly used practice management system, Avimark. So that provides a low barrier for entry in terms of compatibility tech-wise. Uh, it's, it's, it's simple to implement, but unfortunately it has a very high starting price tag and yearly price tag. It's a uh, $1,500 a year plus a 500 yearly mensality just for PetSync. Um, but that is a cost that is handled by the, the clinic itself and not the pet owner. Also, we, we looked at eVet Practice, another communication tool. Um, and this is just a management system for vet clinics. And it provides really access to a pet, all of a pet's electronic records, x-rays, ultrasounds, and laboratory work, among other things, in order to, to really assist the vet in taking care of the pet itself. Um, and keep things on record so that you can see how a pet has developed uh, over its life cycle. Uh, vets also have com full control over what information they would like to make available to clients. If they want, they can divulge these electronic records. Uh, and that is a pet or that is a vet decision, of course. Um, and they may want to keep certain information in house. But uh, generally, the more information you provide to the pet owner, the better. 
It also automates uh, a lot of tasks like sending out reminders about appointments or whether it's time for vaccination, um, checkups, etc. Simply, and that helps primarily the receptionist. Uh, it's a it's a, a lifestyle. It's an ease of lifestyle change right there. And it also helps incorporate a e-signature system, uh, which further reduces the need for hard copies, which can be misplaced, lost, etc., uh, and just keeps everything in one location uh, in order to make sure that all the information that's needed is always there and can be trusted uh, is another important fact. So what did we recommend from our results and from our research into the field? We conducted a SWOT analysis of our report. Um, that means strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So we found that the strengths, uh, we found that we did have quality interviews with our pet owners. Um, they were actual conversations with actual questions rather than simply multiple choice surveys that can be quickly filled uh, online. And we had a lot of variance in our pet owners. And we found a lot of differences between how much they're willing to spend um, and how much they're willing to get involved with their pet. Furthermore, because we were just an independent body, we really had no prior interests coming into this, uh, nor were we trying to guide the research in any which way. We feel that we got some very par uh, impartial results and that can be trusted and accurate. Furthermore, um, we found that the proposed technologies that we found directly correlate to our pet owner interviews. So we really based off our, uh, our efforts and our solutions based off of what we found the pet owners need uh, because we found that, or we believe that Without the pet owner's support and without the pet owners really wanting to make this solution happen, it's, uh, it's never going to happen. And finally, we focused on the users that will determine the success or failure of the technology. As I said, uh, we really emphasize the pet owner in our report and in our analysis. What are the weaknesses of, uh, of our report? We found that, unfortunately, we had a lower response rate from vets than was hoped for and anticipated. So we think some possible solutions could be to engage vets at conferences and organizational meetings, um, but not on business hours, because we found on business hours they were just really hard to get to. We should also get research firm or person to, uh, with authority to engage them. Um, maybe the, the OVC could handle um, reaching out to them. And this should improve the quality and quantity of the results. Uh, furthermore, if we could uh, determine a, a value proposition, if we could approach them with more of a, rather than a mentioning that this is simply a, a research project, if, if we could show them the value in our proposition and the value in the work that we're doing in order to get better engagement from them and for them to feel that it's really worth their time. Also, we didn't really gather, uh, gather enough surveys to fill a full CI for Waterloo. Um, the interviews that we did all across the board except for the pet stores themselves weren't necessarily within Waterloo. We reached out to, to pet owners from various, even countries. Um, and furthermore, because the population of pet owners is so high, uh, it's, it's beyond our scope to make a full confidence interval anyways. And finally, because we, we, we took approach of more of a a quality over quantity. We had really in-depth questions um, and we feel that we got some very quality answers from the surveys that we did get. We were able to do more with less. What opportunities do we see? We see that pet owners are willing to spend uh, a small amount, but in some cases not even too small, 
to improve or better track the management of their pet's health. And this aligns really with the identified need of engaging lower income users because, of course, uh, the lower bracket is the larger of the brackets. And we also found um, there is, of course, a huge, just as everything else, uh, there's a huge shift towards digitalization and uh, incorporating new technologies into old practices. So clinics are noting that there is really a lot of efficiency to be found by using new digital tools. It gives veterinarians more time with patients and uh, less time spent on the simple office work and uh, the tasks that, while are necessary to run an organization, do not necessarily provide value added or consist of the core operations. Uh, furthermore, we, it helps provide analytics and introspection uh, in order to help create further improvements, such as a digital pet food medicine system that can help turn in uh, opt and optimize the supply chain for clinics. And of course, it's always a huge opportunity to just improve transparency um, in order to make that ensure that everybody really knows what's going on uh, at the clinic and and help improve or help increase pet mobility between clinics because uh, of new standard formats appearing and of new digital exams that can be easily transferred from one vet to the other, uh, which just overall, you know, helps increase competition, helps increase user and user satisfaction. And finally, what are the threats we find? We find that a smaller, agile competitor may enter the con, uh, market. And in order to combat this, it's important that uh, we engage this mobile company. It's important that vets uh, and the OVC get on top of these developments as they occur in order to work with the competitor rather than against the competitor and improve their own service. Another fear is that the OVC market is uh, is very small and niche, um, and that maybe these these suggestions are not widely implementable across uh, Canada, shall we say. So in order to combat this, it's important that we test out uh, these the proposed solutions at various clinics with uh, different markets and different um, demographies. So try it out in richer neighborhoods, poor neighborhoods, um, cat-dominated neighborhoods, dog-dominated no neighborhoods, uh, before attempting widespread adoption in order to ensure that you really have the large enough user base to, to validate such an investment. And finally, of course, technology is always changing. It's uh, always improving and its perfection is a moving target. So in order to keep up with that, it's important that we get at the root of technological innovation, find companies on the forefront that are really driving the field. Uh, and by, by doing so, and by doing so in partnership, uh, we can help guide technology uh, to where we want it to go. And we can always ensure that technology is up to date uh, and that we're really on the cutting edge. So what conclusions did we arrive uh, after the full project? Well, first of all, in general, pet owners are willing to spend about up to $100 for new technology if they perceive value in it and if they believe it will truly assist in their pet's health. Second of all, a lot of pet owners get information from the internet and there's really a need for a verifiable and accurate database for which this knowledge can, for which general knowledge can be disseminated from um, in order to just improve overall health care. Finally, um, or furthermore, there's demand for a usable product with a small learning curve. Nobody wants uh, some complicated, newfangled technology that is difficult to implement. Um, and primarily, a lot of pet owners are concerned with their pet's obesity uh, and nutrition in a broader sense, too. So there is a need to inform and educate pet owners about pet nutrition, either 
via increased communication with their vets or via some, maybe an app or some tool that can help with them with nutrition. Furthermore, um, they generally tend to visit pets more, vets more frequently when the vet when the pet is less than one year old, uh, which tends to die off, as we said, uh, when they pass that one year mark. Either well, because less vaccinations are needed, the pet owners themselves feel more confident in their pet care. Uh, so they only do their yearly checkups or vaccinations and whenever they perceive something to be off. On the veterinarian side of things, we feel that, well, they find that most pet care mistakes results due to inexperienced pet care, pet owners and misinformation spread by pet store employees. So uh, this again provides or provides a case for a need for more accurate communication and information to be disseminated. And furthermore, um, more experienced pet owners, pet owners that have grown up with pets or who have had multiple or had one for several years, tend to be a lot better at maintaining pet health um, because they know the downfalls, they've made the mistakes, and they've really learned from those. And they're the one, they're, they're the pet owners you can generally trust.